And when I'm ministering these words to you, beloved, I'm ministering to myself, believe me. So this morning I want to continue and the power, or the key rather, to power is love. Love, the key to power. Love, the key to peace. But we need to ask ourselves a question. When you have the power of love, instead of the love of power, then you will have the peace of God. God wants you to have power. He already gave it to you. It's part of your covenant rights. But the greatest thing that God gave us was his peace. Because his peace passes all understanding. And that peace works through our love. Our love for God and our love for each other as we're going to read today in a few moments. Let's turn in our Bible if we can to the book of John, the 13th chapter. John 13 and I'm going to read 31 verses 31 through 35 and this is in the amplified version of the Bible. When he, Jesus, had left Jesus now, when he, when he, Jesus, had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. Now he has achieved his glory, his honour, his exaltation, and God has been glorified through and in him. Verse 32. And if God is glorified through and in him, God will also glorify him in himself and he will glorify him at once and not delay. Now watch verse 33, beloved. Dear little children, I am to be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me and as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. You are not able to come where I am going. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. By this, notice these words, beloved. By this shall all men know. By what? By this. Not how intelligent you are, not how, you know, um, wealthy you are, not how many things you've accomplished in this world. No, by this, when you show the love of God to others, when you have the revelation of the power of love, your life will literally change, beloved. I'm telling you now, it will change. I'm still on this walk like everybody in here, but I can look back over the last 35, 40 years of my life. I was about five years, I believe, a Christian before God gave me, well, maybe a little before that, the revelation of what I'm teaching you right now. See, we as ministers can get up and teach, and that's wonderful and great, but there's a whole different thing when you, uh, when you have the revelation of it. The revelation brings the Word of God alive in your heart. And even as I speak these words to you this morning, it's like it's just alive inside of me. Here's, here's what I want to read on here for just a moment. The disciple said, if you love me, if you love one another, if you keep on showing love amongst yourselves. Then Peter, of course, comes right out, you know, as Peter would, and says, Lord, where are you going? <laughs> and Jesus answered, you are not able to follow me now where I am going, but you will follow me or shall follow me afterwards. And that is the same with us in this life today, beloved. The word of God is very clear. We are on this earth for a reason and a purpose. You were born for a purpose. You were born for a reason. You're here for that. It won't be till you get to the other side that it will all be revealed to you. But on this side, 
God wants the revelation of love to be revealed to you so that you can chart your course and finish it with joy. No matter how many obstacles come your way, as I just read to you a few moments ago, Jesus himself says, this, I'm not, this isn't a suggestion, it's a commandment. It's for our good. Because when we walk in love, the enemy has no place in part near us. Just really that simple. The truth is, if we love one another, even as he loved us, we will never deliberately hurt anyone. We will never take advantage of anyone. We will never say anything we ought not to say or do. And we, that means anything we know we should not do, we won't do when we walk in love. Now, when we walk in the flesh, we'll fulfill all of the above. You and I both know it. There's nobody in here perfect. There's nobody by the sound of my voice, through the, the social media, perfect. We're all being perfected every day into the likeness of Christ. And each day that you walk the way I'm hoping to be able to teach you today, you'll get stronger and stronger in the things of God because you will understand the wiles of the enemy how the enemy wants you to get out of the love walk. It's the greatest accomplishment he's after because he knows love never fails. Faith worketh by love. He knows if you don't love, your faith is dead. Dead on arrival. Believe, believe me when I tell you, you will not walk in faith, the God kind of faith, if you hold art in your heart against any. No matter how teeny little thing that might be or a huge, humongous thing. You need to be able to go to your bed at night and say, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that I owe no man anything but to love them. Thank you, Lord, that I choose to forgive. I choose to walk this walk. Not for, for anything, but even just selfishly, Lord, for myself because I'm being taught that it's for me, for my good, so that I can walk in faith, so that I can come to your throne and not feel rejected or shunned or sent away. But your word says I can come boldly to this grace, the throne of grace. What grace? That unmerited, undeserved favour of God. And that unmerited, undeserved favour of God that's been poured on us and shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost is what God wants us to be able to do for others, especially those that you don't think deserve it. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we do what he says, we will never fail. We will never say anything that we ought not to say. We will, we, we know that we'll, we'll slip up, okay? We understand that. But you won't get away with it the way you used to. You know, your heart will smote you when you start to do things that you know are not right. You see, we as ministers, there's no point of, of us standing up here and saying, don't, don't, don't. No, that doesn't work. You, you condemn people. God's not condemning us. He's convicting us. There's a whole difference there. Jesus Christ took all that condemnation on him, on that tree for you and me. But when we're convicted by the Holy Spirit, it's like a still small voice inside of you. And I hear it more often than I would like to admit. And that voice would say to me, hello, do you realize what you just said? I'm not talking about being a leader in the body of Christ. That's hard. And that's, that's going to, I'll be accountable for that someday. I'm just talking about being a Christian. How many of you ever get angry? Thank you. You're looking at me like I lost it here. No, seriously, there'll be times that you'll get angry. And I like to say, whether it's true or not, but it's the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. Well, it's just a righteous anger, Lord. And then he'll come back at me and say, really? You, you trying to fool me? 
We can't fool Him. God knows the beginning from the end. He knows you. He knows me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So He commanded us to love one another. That was commandment is in the old law. Now, I want you to understand something that will totally set you free today. Back then, they did the best they could to walk in this. We call it the Ten Commandments. We, God's not erased the Ten Commandments, but when you walk in the new royal law of love, you will not break any of the Ten Commandments. This is the joy we have. This is the freedom we have as Christians. So back then, they were under the old law, but they had no ability to do what they were being asked to do. And God seen this and created his church. Oh, hallelujah. Now he has given us, you and I, the body of Christ, believers, the love nature and it is easy for us to do the things that he commands us to do. That is, if we choose to do it. At any given time of any given day, beloved, you can wake up and you can choose to sin. You can choose to have a bad attitude. You can choose to do anything you want to do. Or you can wake up that self same day and say, Father, help me to get closer to you today and help me to get stronger in this love walk. And if you pray that prayer, God will answer you. So we see that we, he has given us this love nature. It's, it's a command, but yet it's, it's because it's in us. He knows now we can do it. It is easy for a child to love its parents because it's natural. It's natural. This new kind of love has made us natural lovers. We love because he first loved us. And to obey the love law is easy now in the sense that we now have help. The Holy Spirit. And he's the one that will convict you. He's the one that will lead you into all truth for his name's sake. God's ways are truth. God's ways are peace. God's ways are pleasantness. The old law was called the law of death because it had a penalty attached to each of the commandments. There is no penalty attached to the new covenant law. The only penalty is that we suffer when we step out of the love life. We are the ones that suffer. You, those of you that are a little more mature in the Lord know what I'm talking about. In the Christian group of people, you, would have, you hear it all the time. I just had this check, you know. I had this check and I don't have any peace. And we talk that way. We might not even know what we're actually saying. But what we're saying is, you don't have a peace because there's something wrong here. You know, either you're making a wrong decision or you're not the way you should be with God and you're not at ease. And if you, if you take a little checklist, you will find out most of the time, with the exceptions, there's always exceptions, but most of the time you came out of love. You came out of love. It's, this is <laughs> glory to God. It's so real to me. It really is. Thank you, Father. Every step out of love is a step into trouble. I'm going to say that again. Every step out of love is a step into trouble. If you will think back over your life, you will find that every mistake you have ever made has been when you stepped out of love or acted out of love. You stepped in your, in, into your flesh, you wanted your own way, and you, you know, whatever you can fill in the blanks. The bitter words that you spoke that separated you from someone, maybe a loved one, was a step out of love. Unforgiveness is a step out of love. Gossip is a step out of love. Lying is a step out of love. Cheating is a step out of love. Being angry 
being angry is a step out of love unless it is true righteous anger. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. That's another teaching. But there's true righteous anger. You can be, have a righteous anger at blatant sin and, and uncontrollableness that you see in this world today. And that's, that's put inside of you for, for you to pray so that you can pray for these people, pray for our government, pray for our country, pray for this world. Pray for our church, pray for your families, pray for your community, pray for the people that you work beside. This is what separates us from the love of God, is when we choose to walk away. Every time we bruise or hurt someone, we step out of love. I wrote this the other night as God spoke it to me. There is no heavier weight than the burden of regret. No heavier weight. We sang that song for years, leave it there, leave it there. Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. But most of the time, if we're honest, We leave it for five minutes. (laughs) I know what I'm talking about. I've done it for years and so have you. But way back in the beginning, I never thought I'd give this testimony, but I will. Somebody needs to obviously hear it. But way back in the beginning when I was in bondage, addictive bondage to all kinds of things, (laughs) Uh, there wasn't the the type of world we were living in now as far as drugs go. I never even thought about drugs. But I had my own drugs. Alcohol and smoking cigarettes. And so I'll never forget this as long as I live because it really happened to me. I remember going up to an altar call in a church and I had these cigarettes in my hand. And the preacher, he was an evangelist, and he was saying, all of you that need to quit smoking, you know, you, you get, uh, get these cigarettes up here, and he was going on and on and on, you know, everybody's, yeah, 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 I wasn't, yeah, 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 and I was bringing it up very, very reluctantly, you know, <laughs> but I always had a spare packet in the glove compartment. I kid you not, this is Be Real Sunday, okay? And of course, he takes all these, no, he tells us, now you take those cigarettes and you just, you just destroy that packet and everybody's destroying them and saying, amen, hallelujah, and I'm in there, amen, hallelujah, Lord, I'll never touch them again, I'll never touch them. See, I was in the law. It was the love of God that draws men to repentance. Not somebody telling you what not to do. The word that we have now is it's done, done, done. It's done, it's the finished work. So I got out of that church. I'm bawling my eyes out because I needed a cigarette. (laughs) I was so upset that I did this. I destroyed that whole pack. My God, it was a new pack. I remember, had them in my glove compartment, pulled them out, just teeny wee things. I nearly burned my lips. If you want to know if I know about addiction, you're listening to the right person. But the only way that I was set free, beloved, and the only way you will be set free is to know the love of God that passes all understanding. That's the key. When you hear that still small voice say to you, it's okay, I'm not condemning you. I love you enough to show you this isn't going to do you any good. You know, it's a totally different thought pattern. It's a totally different lifestyle. It it truly is. And when I see people today in bondage, and I know Christians that have been in bondage for years, that's none of my business. 
It's between them and God. Because see, we can see the outward things. We can see the drinkers or the drug addicts or whatever. But what about what's inside? That can be worse. Anger and hatred and all of these other things. Unforgiveness is literally killing you. You don't even understand the power of unforgiveness. And so I pray I'm getting through here today because we need to hear the truth. You know, as long, you know, my father would say it this way, people who live in glass, stones or gla- glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And that's how I feel. It's not that there's not a time with leadership where we have to address things that may or may not happen in a church body. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, you know, you've heard about the owls in the church. Who, 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 who? Who did that? Who did that? Who said that? Who? Wow. That's not godly. It's far from it. Beloved, if you could just hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, it's awesome. I can feel it in the Spirit. I can feel it. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 13, 11, the NIV. Hallelujah. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Now let me just be plain this morning. Unless you're planning to live on a desert island or take a vow of silence, you're going to have to learn how to get along with people, right? That's the biggest job we have in this world, getting along with people. Hallelujah. So here are some suggestions, 10 actually, that may help you, and I pray that they do. Okay. These will only work if you've even thought about the book titled, What Do I Do When Strangulation Is Not An Option? (laughs) Okay? (laughs) I read that book years ago, and it helped me a lot. Okay, so the number one is, guard your tongue. Always say less than you think. Now that's hard. I know it's hard for me. I always, for years, and, and I still slip into that. I got to have the last say. Right. Thank you. There's one person over there honest. Yeah. We all are like that to a degree. We want our opinion heard, and that's fine. Guard your tongue. Always say less than you think. Two, make promises sparingly, but keep them faithfully. Three, Never let an opportunity to pass to say a kind word. To say a kind word. Reminds me, I just thought about this. It reminds me of something I heard years ago about a man in, in Scotland. And, um, you know, the, he had been, it was his funeral. He had been laid out and his wife and his sons were all sitting in the front row and this pastor's gone on and on and on and on and on about the wonderful things this man did and his wife is getting looking at her sons more and more because this wasn't the man she was married to and he, she said finally to the oldest son go up there and see if that's your father in there <laughs> Don't ever give up an opportunity to say nice things about people. A kind word. The fourth thing, be genuinely interested in others. Show it by listening and expressing your appreciation. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. So be genuinely interested. Try your best to appreciate people. And if you do, you will never be without friends, beloved. Number five, try to be cheerful. Don't dwell upon your aches and your pains. They'll always be there sooner or later. You'll get to that place in life. 
There are a dozen people in the nearest hospital who would be gladly exchanging places with you. Always look on the bright side. Try to. I know it's not always easy, but you can if you make a decision to. Number six. Keep an open mind. Discuss, but don't argue. Learn to dis disagree without being disagreeable. Give other people the benefit of the doubt. Number seven. Discourage gossip. I'm talking about in your homes, in your workplace, in your community. Gossip will kill. It literally will. So discourage gossip. It is destructive. Number eight, be sensitive to the feelings of others. Be sensitive. If you do, people will consider you to be wise, even if you're not. Even if you know different. But if you're sensitive to people's needs and be patient with them, be patient, little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Don't go too fast in life. Always stay at that steady, steady, steady pace and try to be that way with others because not everyone's where you are. And when we do mature in Christ, you know, pride can puff you up, beloved. Knowledge can puff you up. You don't want to go there. You want to always stay soft-hearted, knowing there but for the grace of God, go as I. Go as I. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. It's amazing how God creates us all differently. It truly is. I'm talking about something here in the Holy Spirit is quickening this other true story to you. I'm going back now in my past. It's amazing because it fits right in to what I'm trying to get across. Ooh. Years ago, before I ever left Scotland, we had a, a small boarding house. Uh, I think it was about eight, eight or nine bedrooms in it. And uh, we used to, we, we, stayed near a, we stayed near a college. So we had the college kids at certain seasons. And then in the summertime, we had others. But we didn't do the letting out for all the holiday makers. We had set certain people there all the time. And so... This particular lady came to join with us. And I'm not, I don't want to get into all the gruesome details of this, but suffice to say, it turned out that she was an alcoholic. And I will never forget it because it, it just shocked me. I couldn't understand at the time. I was very young. I didn't understand any of that. But we had another elderly gentleman in that house at the time. And I remember his name was Mr. Roberts. And I remember he was standing at the top of these stairs. Now again, I'm not a Christian. I don't know any of these things that I'm trying to teach you, but I knew what was right and I knew what was wrong. And sometimes we just forget the very simple principles in life. And he was standing at the top of these stairs and he was talking to all these younger people and different ones. And he was telling them about how she, all the things that she, she, he found out about her. And I remember running up those stairs and I said, enough, enough. And he just looked at me and I said, do not, please do not ever spread this kind of gossip anymore in this house. You love that woman. I didn't even know. I mean, I knew there was a God. I believed in Jesus, but I had no knowledge of what I'm trying to teach you. And I said to those people, I said, there, but for the grace of God, go with you or me. Never knowing that that was going to come to pass in my life. But God was there for me, just like he was there for her. Do you hear what I'm saying? So it behooves us to make sure our own linen is nice and clean on that line. Amen? I don't know why I'm going here today, Lord. 
<sighs> but you know. So discourage gossip. Be sensitive to the feelings of others. Pay no attention to Ill, ill-natured remarks about you. Just pay no attention. Just let it run off your back like water off of a duck. Live so that nobody will believe them. That's the best advice I can give. And number 10, don't worry about getting the credit. Just give your best and be patient. God keeps the records. I was told that many years ago by a wonderful Christian woman. And she, I remember the day like it was yesterday. She says, Sister McKinnon, don't ever forget that God keeps the books. Someday he'll open them. And you and I will stand before him when he opens the books. Right now, our job, she didn't say this to me, but I'm saying it to you. Right now, our job is to love and Unconditionally. Unconditionally. Just be patient with people. Tell them about God. Tell them how much God loves them. The Bible tells us in Luke 6 27 Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you. Respond with prayer for that person. I want to ask you a question. Is there someone you really resent? You're the only one that can answer that. Maybe they're in your life to teach you something. Here's one lady's testimony. Years ago, I felt I was meant to work at a a newspaper building called the Gazette. But when a job opened up, they hired Abigail. I'd always been taught to pray for those you resent. So I prayed for her, sometimes three, four times a day. That's how much I disliked her. Eventually, I landed a job at the Gazette, but not the one I wanted. No, no, Abigail got that one. Plus all the best assignments she got. So I just kept praying, God bless Abigail. It's all I knew to do. Then after watching her, I realized something. I realized that she was quick, she was efficient, she was a good interviewer. So I began to push myself thinking, well, if she can do it, so can I. Abigail was actually inspiring me. Eventually, I stopped resenting her and we became friends. Soon afterwards, I got an offer from a publisher to write a book. And when it became a New York Times bestseller, I was so glad that I hadn't gotten Abigail's job or I'd never had the time to write my book. (laughs) See, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. God works the night shift. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to work all things together for our good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Love says, love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you. Respond with prayer for that person. Certain people that are in your life, beloved, are to show you what you're capable of. The ones you represent, as you, and you might think they're your thorn in the side, come on, actually teach you things you need to learn. So stop resenting them and start praying for them and watch what happens. Watch what happens. Oh, glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm going to close in a moment. Just bear with me. I just want to close with this. Hallelujah. Where do I want to close, Lord? Just a moment. I want to do something different here. I'll find it. If I'm supposed to, right? Well, Praise God. This isn't where I wanted to go, Lord. 
Where am I going? <laughs> Are you being patient yet? Because I sure am. I know I had those notes there. But whatever. Thank you, Jesus. I'll just do what I have to do. One of the first steps in receiving and releasing God's kind of love is to recognize the difference, and I'm going to be closing with this, between human love and a true God kind of love. Man's corrupt nature doesn't have access to God kind of love. God is love, and any man or woman who does not have God is separated from that true love. That's why you have the power within you to have an absolutely incredible experience with God. If you do so, just a few of the things that you've been taught to do today, not out of performance to God, not because you have to, but because you want to. There's no point of trying to make people do what they have to. Because as you see with many a child, beloved, and we're all children, you put them in the corner and tell them to sit down. Yes, they're sitting down on the outside, but they're standing up on the inside. And that doesn't change, it's human nature. So I'm here to tell you today, beloved, if you walk this walk that I've taught you today, and you take into consideration the steps that I've gave you, you, can, no, you I don't know if you were writing them down, but you can listen to it again on YouTube. I think it would be well worth your while to go through those steps again. And as you do this, you will find yourself getting strengthened with power in the inner man. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you have sent forth to accomplish. I thank you that I've spoken the words that you've gave me to speak. And as the Apostle Paul said, let none of my words fall to the ground. And Father, I thank you for each and every person right here in this auditorium and those listening by YouTube and other areas of social media. And I thank you, Father, that they also hear your voice. If there be one here today, you may have just slipped in here and you haven't been the way you feel in your own heart nobody's judging you but in your own heart you know you could there could there's room for improvement with your walk with God if that's you today we want to pray for you if you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your savior that's the first step today you can make him your savior and make him your lord if you're here today and you're saying, I do need, I do need to give up so many things, Pastor. Don't, don't press yourself. Don't, don't get into a place of panic. Just take it one day at a time and God will show you the next step and the next step and the next step. So let's pray together, beloved, if we can. Can you say this with me? Heavenly Father, I come to you today and I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me. And this day, I receive Jesus Christ as my savior. And this day, I make him my Lord. Now, if you've said that prayer today for the first time, please make sure you don't leave here today until you see Pastor Sandy. She will be back there with others. and. You know, you need to get some literature to start you on your way as a Christian. Now let's pray if we can. Heavenly Father, I came here today to hear your word. And I believe that I need to make some adjustments in my life. And I thank you now that as I confess these things to you, you will help me to mature and to grow in your ways. I thank you that I seek your face. I seek your approval. I seek your love. And in Jesus' name, these things will come upon me 
and overtake me. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Let's